Protests come and go, so in general we call it the waves of protest and since 2009 we see as much protests as since the ro roaring 60s. So yes, there are more protests at the moment. Why? One of the hardest questions of social sciences. I think one of the reasons is social media, but also inspiration and the, f the sharing of efficaciousness. So people see that other people protest and think, we should do the same. And then they go into the streets. So social media, sharing, awareness and efficaciousness. Social media create the opportunity to uh, what we call the super size effect to create and to reach a large group of people in a short amount of time against low costs. And that is what mobilization makes costly in general, to reach a large group of people. So social media creates the opportunity to do that in a short time and against low costs. And therefore what we see with social media is that everyone can be a creator of uh, information and therefore everyone can be an organizer, an activist. And that is what changed the whole protest dynamics. Everyone can be an organizer rather than the old school labor unions who organizes it top down. So it's not um, a take home message, but a take home question. Uh, because we simply don't know. And the question is, did the dynamics of protest change due to social media? And what are the consequences? And I think it's important to think about it. Why? Because first of all, because it's leaderless, we see that um, the, the politicians don't know who to speak to. And therefore, the political efficaciousness is lower. And what we also see is that the protests, because they are sp in general spontaneous, bottom-up and scriptless, we see that they tend to get out of hand easier. So the dynamics between the police and the uh, protesters is more repressive. And therefore, what we see on the one hand, lower political efficaciousness and higher repression may well be at odds with the issue of protest and that is enacting our democratic right.